Hello and welcome back to Stephen C Ministries. Got a really incredible podcast today for you guys to listen to with my sister Denise. We sit down and we discuss her testimony coming out of the new age, human design, and spending over 15 years in the occult. Um, everything from her psychedelic use to the different practices that she was involved in and how she came to find all that she was looking for in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is an incredible testimony. I know you guys are going to be blessed by it. So enjoy the podcast. Denise, I really want to thank you for coming on the podcast today, carving out that time to sit down with me and have this discussion. It's something that I'm really, really grateful for. Um, And I know you're going to be sharing your testimony today, and I know that a lot of people are going to be blessed by that. So the first question that I have for you is, did you grow up in a Christian home or were you sort of exposed to the new age and uh, new age philosophy from a young age? Yeah, thank you for having me. It's such a blessing to be here. Well, to start... um... I didn't grow up in a Christian home, like at all, although I was um, part of the cultural Christianity, like in my country, the pre- the prevalent religion is Eastern Orthodox, Eastern Orthodoxy. And like I knew some stuff, I knew some basic stuff, but in our religion, um, you have a lot of man-made tradition, like Um, going to church to light a candle or even to worship icons. And from the very young age, um, I was taken to churches. It's not that I had never stepped into a church, but it was like just on major festivals, major holidays. And I have particular memories um, that were like a bit traumatic to me because I... One time as a child, I was forced to kiss an icon and I didn't understand. I didn't know um, the moral law that God has given us in the Ten Commandments and that it says that you should never worship an image. You should never make an image. And even as a child, I felt super wrong, super wrong at doing that. I felt super dirty after that. And that kind of made me neglect everything that Christianity had to offer because it felt so wrong. So on the other hand, my mom was highly involved into the New Age stuff, into occultism. Um, While I was growing up, the occult stuff that we see so mm, prevalent in our days, like everyone's talking about astrology, about numerology, stuff like that, yoga, in that in those times um that wasn't so famous so um i was exposed to a lot of things like energy healing like um constantly um hearing stories about alien abductions aliens energies entities all this kind of stuff mm, but really mm, my interest for the truth, for the unseen realm started when I was a teenager. So I went through a phase of great rebellion against everything. And I started doing some drugs, some psychedelic, started taking psychedelics. And it was just a confirmation that this spiritual world does exist. And it sparked my interest. And I, as I was doing and experimenting I wanted to know more about this world, more about what's in, what's happening beyond our um, perceptions, our visible world. So I started asking questions and really maybe during that time, I got like a weird sensation, like a, a clockwork mechanism started ticking inside of me that made me kind of um, put me sort of in an urgency to find answers. So I was like um, not scared of death, but I knew, I somehow knew that I don't have much time here and I have to find answers and and I have to find them quickly. So from that time, like when I graduated, I got introduced to the law of attraction And from then on, that was like kind of the pivotal point in my life uh, where the world of the new age opened up for me. And with my friends, we were like so interested in this stuff. 
we were like everything in our life um allowed this to like spread and bloom with uh, a very high speed because we were at that time we were we started hitchhiking so we were relying a lot on the law of attraction and a lot on synchronicities but what happens is that when you don't know god when you don't know um the real characteristics of god his character and what he approves of what he doesn't you just step into this world of the unknown and anything that comes to you you interpret as a synchronicity and as if it's coming from god or the divine let's call it divine uh, so there's zero discernment on what you are going to be involved with because not every synchronicity is from God and most of them are actually not. Like, for example, there are a lot of people who are just asking who they are, what is their purpose. And then after a while, you find this astrologer and he tells you, well, you have these psychic abilities, you might have a career in that, you might be successful in that, and you're like, yeah, I might try that. And then after a while, you scroll in internet and you see this uh, course for like tarot reading, and it's it has a 20% discount, and you interpret this as synchronicities from the divine, which is actually not the case, because we now know that it's totally demonic and the demonic force is operating and at very high rank here on this earth. And as the Bible says, the whole world lies in the devil, like it's pretty much everywhere. So when you don't have a discernment, you get exposed to all of that and you interpret it as something that is actually good and beneficial and you're actually helping people, you're helping yourself. You are finding answers that you were looking for. But my journey can be like it can be divided into three stages. Like the first initial stage was when I got introduced into the law of attraction and I started really seeking and searching for the truth. I wanted to find God with all my heart. And eventually I I just um uh, stumble across the ancient eastern practices not yoga so much but like tai chi qigong these types of thing of things and i was highly involved into that and i was very devoted it's like um not in the new agey kind of way but the old age like the ancient traditions the ancient teachings i was fascinated by it but then after a while it didn't work so well and I kind of understood that a lot of my problems, a lot of my issues that were not resolved through these practices are because I had trauma in my life. I had childhood trauma. So this is like the second stage. And a lot of people have this, like, the story is quite similar. Like, you get introduced by the law of attraction. You start manifesting. You start exploring then you understand that you have trauma and you open up the realm of shadow work, of um, integrating the trauma, working with the traumatic experiences that you were going through in your childhood. And um, that was the first, the second phase of my journey, which is like actually like, uh, I forgot to mention, like 15 years into the cult, the new age. Uh, so after that yeah i started doubling into shadow work a lot and integration and all these um movement modalities that were like um somatic practices that are intended to heal the trauma stored in the body and during that period my interest for the body and how amazing it is started like developing and growing so yeah um but eventually when i was into the shadow work 
I would ask myself, does this really have an end? Like, can you ever integrate every trauma, every single traumatic experience that you have ex been exposed to? And I just perceived and I pushed through it. I wanted to like get rid of all the trauma. And meanwhile, I would like be involved in witchcraft in different um, divine feminine practices um, numerology astrology all kinds of things um, eventually I came to human design like the first time I came to human design it was like in 2014 and I didn't pay attention to it but with the years it kept coming back and it kept drawing my attention and eventually I started researching more and experimenting more. Uh, and I saw evidence for it because it's called like the human design system. It invites you into an experiment. So it's very hands on experience that you are going. It's not like just theory. It's not like, for example, the astrology is, uh, where it's all knowledge and you can like um, read the descriptions about you it's a way of life and with the pandemic when the pandemic came I really dove deep into human design and I decided that I have to be radical and just follow through it and that is my third stage of being in the new age where what the human design teaches is basically you don't have to worry too much about all of these questions that you have because you have this um, innate energetic mechanism that is built into your body. And if you follow that mechanism, you will be just fine. Your re relationships will be fine. You will attract the correct people, attract the correct opportunities. Um, so everything is going to be fine as long as you follow this body mechanism that you have that is unique for everyone. And the idea is that you get to like sit on the passenger seat. So like the idea is that your body is like a vehicle, like a, a car and your passenger, like your conscious sits on the back seat and just watches, <clears throat> just watches what happens and doesn't interfere so you let your body take the lead entirely so that's that was my third stage where i completely let go of everything of every um preoccupation that i was having with not having all answers and you just start living your life as you are intended to live according to human design so that was it. That was my, the main things that I was involved with. During, yeah, do you have a question? Oh, yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? You're involved in a lot yeah. of different modalities. Um, I think it would be interesting to kind of look over a few of those and see how you feel about them now. But I don't know if you, uh, just so that we're following your story kind of chronologically, I don't know if you want to talk a bit about how you came to know Jesus and then we can look back on the practices and maybe you can kind of explain um, yeah. what you see as wrong with them now. But it might make more sense if you kind of get to the point in your story where you come to know Christ. Yes, yes. So while I was um, into the New Age and while I was growing this interest about the body, I eventually um, started uh, being more interest, interested in the dance um, movement modalities, every, everything related to dance. So as I was doing a lot of divine feminine practices and a lot of divine feminine worship, um, I stumbled across a dance style that is called tribal fusion belly dance. So it's... Um, it's a, a dance style that combines belly dance with um, a lot of pagan practices, a lot of ancient um, in Hindu dance practices, which are all mm, worship of the false gods. 
and also a lot of other dance styles as well, but it has this temple vibe. It has this uh, ancient temple vibe. Um, so uh, I was a lot into this and I, uh, with the pandemic where I couldn't um, go to classes anymore, like I couldn't um, be in physical class, I started researching an online option and I found um, a dance teacher who was in the Netherlands. And it's so curious because my dance teacher came to Jesus uh, one year before me and she got to get interviewed right before me, right before this interview. And it's amazing. I didn't know that. And it's just amazing how the Lord is working. So uh, I was following her on social media. She was very famous dancer at that time. And um, she was involved into a lot of the occult practices as well, like I was. And just to mention that this tribal fusion style attracts mainly people who are a lot into the occult, like mainly witches, astrologers, people who are into human design, gene keys, stuff like that, yoga. <clears throat> so um, it was like, um, it always felt like I'm in my own tribe when I'm around such people because you're dancing together but also you have a similar worldview like everyone is in the occult and when you're speaking everyone gets what you're what you're saying so there was this spiritual community also and um, she was sharing a lot about um, all of these occult practices that she was into she was like highly into the divine feminine mm -hmm. and I was following that but uh, eventually uh, like in the year 2022 I think she started uh, sharing more about Jesus and that was shocking because she was talking about astrology about um, uh, divine feminine and all of a sudden she's sharing about Jesus and the Bible and I was like what what and very few weeks after or I don't know who was first, a second dancer from this community started sharing about Jesus. And I was like, I I first saw their accounts got hacked and because they were constantly sharing about Jesus, about the Bible, about Bible verses. And it was nothing like the content that they used to have. And eventually I thought that they lost their minds. They got brainwashed somehow. And I unfollowed them. It's interesting because in that period of time, I suffered a severe health crisis. Like I, uh, I was on a keto diet for a while and it turned out really bad. So um, I was in a hospital actually, and I can't remember if uh, I stumbled across the first um, Jesus messages on my Instagram while I was in the hospital. I can't remember, or it was right after I got out of the hospital. But the Lord was reaching out to me in those moments. And uh, what's important to mention is that after I got out of the hospital, I was prescribed two medications that were like, that had huge, huge lists of side effects, like very dangerous. And I had to decide whether I should take them or not. And according to human design, each decision you make, you have to kind of make it based on your body, based on your body response towards it. And my body said, it's all, it's okay, it's totally okay to take them. And shortly after, I suffered the most severe side effects. I was near death. I was like in total horror, like my body completely freaked out. I had this, I, I have no explanation what happened. Like my, my body was completely ruined and um, I had these chemical reactions inside of me that I, I just don't have, I have no explanation what happened, but it was very scary and I thought I was going to die. So during that period, during that moment, I, I actually felt the presence of God for the first time really tangible in my life. I felt that he's in control. 
that he decides whether I'm going to die or not. And he kind of reassured me that I'm not going to die this day. So that was like a wake up call because when I was in the human design system, I kind of forgot about God because now you're just living your life. You're, you can afford um, not having too much questions about all these bigger things like who am I? You just let things happen and you just learn who you are based on your experiment in the human design. So um, I kind of forgot about my pur pursuit of God and it was like a, a wake up call that, well, actually, I haven't found God. Actually, um, like in the human design, you're told that your body is the highest authority and in every step you have to listen to it. And if you listen to it, it will always lead you the correct way. And um, it's not that you won't have problems, but it will always be able to lead you out of the problems and lead you in the correct way. It's also thought that, thought that um, you yourself are a god. You are the god of your life. And that was like a big wake-up call because I understood that, well, someone else created me and someone else decides whether or not I'm going to die. And my body is obviously not in control in that moment. So it's like, it's a fragile thing. It's, it, it's very fragile. And if it gets hurt, uh, if it gets hurt, um, it can't lead you out of everything. And there is a force, obviously, that is superior to the body. And in that moment, like later on, when I learned about Jesus through my dance teacher, I was like, I didn't even think that it was a message from the Lord. It was a sign. It was a, an invitation for me to grow, to get closer to him. Because based on my past and based on what I used to believe about the Bible, about Jesus, it was never an option even. So I, I didn't even recognize that he was calling me. I was so blinded. And after a while, like I unfold my teacher. And after a while, like six months later, I decided to check what he, she was doing. And she was um, sharing about Jesus, sharing about um, the Bible. But also she was exposing the new age like things like yoga, like astrology, like the psychedelics. Um, and I got interested because at that point of my life, I have already seen some sort of evidence based on it. Like I, I could see that like my friends who are doing ayahuasca, for example, there was a difference before and after and after these experiences after these ceremonies i could see the darkness i could definitely see the darkness in them of course i couldn't see the darkness in myself but there was like a, a kind of um like um discernment about these things and i was already in the stage where i have tried everything and it, it didn't really work so I got into this human design system and hoping that just living according to my body, that would work. Mm. So I was a lot interested into the explosion of these mm, new age practices. And I started doing my research and very quickly became clear that based on the origins of the new age, it clearly satanic and it's the same things they are doing they're doing the same practices they're having the same beliefs um everything is pretty much the same only they're called satanist and you're called like a yogi or something like that astrologer um uh, so yeah i was uh, fascinated to find out that 
all of the things that I used to believe in were actually satanic, but no one was talking about human design. So I thought that, well, maybe it's okay. No one's talking about that. And after all, God created this body and he, he made me like this. Uh, so I assume that it's okay, but a question in my inner being, like, I kept coming back and I kept remembering the moments where I was near death and I discovered that God is superior and my body is not the ultimate authority. So I started questioning and um, probably at some point um, I just uh, read a, a post of Imaya or my dance teacher um, that she she was saying basically if you don't believe what I share about Jesus and that the Bible is the word of God literal literally uh, if you don't believe me just ask for the truth and because I didn't believe in anything about Jesus and the Bible at that moment um, but I was kind of starting to awake and the veil started lifting up my eyes I started praying incessantly for the truth and I started praying to God for the first time, like really, really hard, like 24-7 pretty much. And that lasted about two weeks and the Lord really wanted me to be humble and to let go of any preconceived notions I had. Like if you come to him with the desire to know the truth about him and about everything. You have to let go of everything that you're holding because you have to admit that you are a finite being and you might not know everything. So that took time for me to be extra humble. And uh, during that time, I was keep asking, what is the truth? Show me the truth, show me the truth. And one day, um, as I was praying for the truth, a voice came out of every cell of my body and said like thunder, I am truth. And I was like, whoa, I was full of this reverence because I knew he was talking to me. I am the truth, but I didn't know what that meant. Only this sentence. And the next day that happened again, I, he said, I am the truth. And I was like, I, then I was praying, well, what do you mean by I'm the truth? I don't understand. Please explain, please explain, please show me what is the truth. And then uh, he gave me another sign. Like I saw, like I started, I saw a cross sign in the, in the sky where, well, everything was uh, like foggy white. And we have this uh, tower, TV tower in the mountain and it was shaped like a cross like the the fog and the clouds were covering everything else and only that cross shape was on this white sky and that was everything i was i was able to see because i was like i was incessantly praying for him to lead me in the right direction and he was leading me obviously to christ um then what happened was that one night during my work shift, I was praying incessantly again for the truth. And in that moment, he revealed himself. And that was the most amazing moment in my entire life. Like he, he opened the, the space in the room. He opened the skies and he filled the entire room with his presence. And in that time, so many things happened. Like he gave me to he gave me the understanding what he meant by saying I am the truth. And I understood that he is the truth and I really knew what he meant. But he also made me understand that everything that wasn't from him was from the devil from the enemy of our souls. So I instantly understood that human design was not from him. I understood that everything about the new age is not from him. Uh, and when you are faced with him, with his presence, 
you understand that he is holy and you look yourself in this holy mirror and you understand that you are not like that. You see your sin. You can't help but see your sin. And I immediately repented of my sins. It's the most natural reaction. Uh, and also it wasn't like um, a very... He wasn't blaming me for the sin. It was super loving. He was super loving. He showed me that he has a personal attitude towards me and he cherished me and he loved me the way that I am. He just didn't love the sin. So I repented of the sin, of my sins and he filled me with the Holy Spirit. He changed my heart in that moment. And that was the moment where... I cannot describe it in any other way, but he, it was like he, he made a transplantation of a heart. He gave me a new heart. Uh, he resurrected me to life because I understood that before that, before knowing him, I was dead. I was literally dead. dead. And I, my entire life, I was walking dead. And in that moment, I, for the first time, tasted what true life is, because life is only found in him. He says in the Bible, Jesus says, I am the life, I'm true life. Um, so in that moment, um, he didn't reveal himself as Jesus. He knew that I'm so interested in history and archaeology, and he actually used that interest. For me to um, put me on the quest to know who he was because I was so interested. I knew right away that I should start reading the Bible. I knew that the answers are there. I also had this, um, he put this in my heart to discover who Jesus is. So I started my research and I researched a lot and actually discovered that Jesus is himself. He's, he's God. He's God. And that was my discovery. And since then, I I completely, uh, when I trusted that Jesus is the Lord, you have no other option than to give your whole life to him and follow him. So this is the, that was the complete um, new birth that I went through. Yeah. Amen. That, that's really incredible. And so one of the things that I found really interesting is, were you repenting of your sins before you'd read the Bible? Like, how did you know what you needed to repent of? Was it just because you'd been given a new heart, you could see that certain practices in your life you needed to leave behind? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I got the understanding that he's holy and I'm not holy. I had this understanding that I'm not God, like I used to think. Because in the New Age, it's like one of the main beliefs that you're God. I knew that I'm not God. And I repented of that belief, basically, because you yourself were making yourself a God. And that's not true. That's literally not true. And it's blasphemy, actually. So it's hurting him. It's actually hurting him. And uh, yeah, I repented um, basically of all my life being deceived, being led astray from him and following my own understandings of things instead of going to him and actually being interested in his perspective. Yeah. That's incredible because that's a supernatural encounter with him, you know, like he's, you're not having to read in, in the scriptures that he's holy. You, you experience that for yourself before you'd even read of that in the yeah. scriptures, which is really incredible. Yeah, and that's the biggest difference um, in the New Age. Like, in the New Age, you hear that God is love, God is uh, light and uh, joy and peace, all of these nice, th nice things. But somehow we get so deceived and we forget that he is also holy. And this is the one of the main mm, uh, things that make us deceived because we... Uh, we forget that he's holy. And uh, that means that if he is holy, there is also sin. And when you don't acknowledge the holiness, you don't acknowledge sin as well. 
And there is this belief that sin doesn't exist. I didn't believe in sin myself in, before he showed me his holiness. And I understood immediately that sin is a real thing. And I understood also that we are all living in sin, no exception, except except of he resurrecting you back to life and giving you the new heart. Amen. Yeah. I mean, that's really incredible. And thank you so much for sharing your experience there. And, you know, you've spent over 15 years in the occult and you come to Christ in this one moment and to have all these realizations, it must have been really, really profound. Um, I've got a lot more questions for you, actually, um, that I w that I want to sort of unpack. You know, you were involved in so many different things and a lot of people that are watching this now might be involved in the same kind of things you were. And perhaps they don't have the same understanding yet of who God is and what he requires of us. And so... Maybe you could help us uh, understand how you see some of the practices you were involved in now. Like uh, a good place to start might be human design because I haven't heard that many uh, that many people speak about it. What do you see as uh, incompatible with Christianity in human design? Like can somebody, you said to me before that you'd met people who thought they were Christians that were practicing human design. Why do you think that that can't be the case? Why can't Christians practice human design? Yeah, so there are tons of uh, things that are wrong with human design, but unfortunately, when you are deceived, you are not able to distinguish these things. Like, for example, the first thing is that it was channeled by a demon. Right, right away, if you are a Christian, you know that this is demonic. Like, uh, you can't, you can't even think of diving deep into such things. Um, next thing is the whole teaching, like you are relying on your body to make decisions. You are putting your entire faith, your entire trust in something that is created. And if you research the, uh, if you get more involved in, in the research of say, Satanism, you will be able to pinpoint that every Satanic teaching has something in common and this is the worship of the creation this is not the worship of the creator who is outside of creation like he's like the painter and everything in creation is like the painting and you yourself as a created thing you are a painting so you don't have all the answers you are a finite being you even more we live in a fallen world because of the sin, because of the first sin when uh, our relationship with the Lord got ruptured. Uh, we live in this fallen world, so everything is not as it was intended. So even our bodies, um, you cl you may claim that uh, they they function perfectly and they're so wise in this um, in the human design sense that. You have this energetic blueprint that you have to follow and it will lead you in a correct way. But we have to acknowledge that after the fall, this body is not, um, it's affected by the fall and it's, it's part of this fallen matrix that we are living in. And no matter what, it will always lead you away from God. It's just how it happens. And if you're listening to it, the body doesn't distinguish between moral, like morally good things and sin. It will lead you into sin. It may lead you into something good, of course, but it will lead you into sin also. And that's really a great, um, a great element of the human design. Um, because if you're listening to the body, your body can tell you that, oh, it's okay to get involved into astrology, into divination, into um, fornication, into um, polyamorous relationship, because it says that, well, your body is okay with that. And also uh, your profile, your description that you're given also promotes that, well, maybe you are designed for that. You are not designed for a monogamous relationship. And right away, it's it's leading you into sin. It's making sin okay. It's 
giving you a description that kind of combines good things and bad things and they they make it like that's your true self like you can be polyamorous that's part of your true self you shouldn't be ashamed of this um that's who you are and you're giving this false identity basically because when you don't know christ when you don't know god you don't know who you who you are basically your identity is found after you meet christ you don't know who you are before that and yeah you're given a false identity amen yeah and christ mm -hmm. makes sense of everything so what i hear you saying uh, one of the fundamental errors in uh human design is is that you're trusting a, a broken instrument you've got like a compass which is your body but your body is fallen and your your compass is actually broken it's not pointing to true north it's not going to actually help guide you because you're living in a fallen body in a fallen world and we need to look outside of our bodies and outside of ourselves to god um who is the, to the true god jesus christ uh and that also on top of the fact that you're using a broken instrument you are not god and you know so you i think you mentioned the part of the human design teaching is that you are god that we're all god is that correct yeah yeah that's Would one of the main teachings yeah um uh, because it says that um uh, you are the highest authority and there is no other authority except of you. Uh, it talks about um, the totality, but uh, it it doesn't uh, believe, human design doesn't support the belief that there is a creator. So according to it, um, everything is just a random byproduct of evolution and it just so happened. It's a happy accident, as they call it. Uh, it's a happy accident, so there is no higher authority that I should be um, answering to and uh, held accountable. Um, so you are God. You yourself are God. And no no other God except you. Except you. And that's very... Um, it sounds very sweet to our ears. Like in the Bible, it says you your ears will get tickled. And we like that. We like hearing that we are gods, we are unique, we are all these kinds of nice things, and that we are on top of our lives. But it it takes a really um, a bad circumstance, maybe, to be awakened to the truth that you're not, actually. Sometimes not, but if you are too deceived, it's the, it's the way. Amen. Yeah, that, that's another thing I see in your stories. You were a truth seeker from a very early age. You mentioned getting into psychedelics and you have these questions around, um, I think you mentioned you knew you were going to die and so you had to seek out answers and you had to get them quickly, mm -hmm. which is something that I definitely relate to. And I think that a lot of people that are caught up in, whether it's the new age spirituality or alternative uh, philosophies and spiritualities, are, they really are often seeking the truth. And I think that that's why so many of them are arriving at the conclusion that Jesus is the truth because they're genuinely seeking uh, for that truth. And in your story, you have gone through so many of these different pathways that people are seeking answers in. And so I think it it carries a lot of weight when you yourself warn people against getting into human design. Um, another thing that I'm perhaps hoping to get your opinion on is psychedelic drugs. And the reason for that is um, I've had my own experiences with psychedelic drugs. And uh, I think that they also proved to me that uh, the reality isn't what we're told it is in high school. You know, we're not just these highly evolved apes that when we die, our consciousness stops, um, which I believe is a lie. I don't believe that that's true. Um, and so I think what we do is we seek out answers because we're created in the image of God and because we know that there's more to the story than that. We seek out answers, but we sometimes seek them out of the wrong place. So maybe you could help people understand um, what you see is dangerous about the use of psychedelics. Do you think psychedelics are useful? Do they lead people closer to the truth or do they take people away from the truth and the answers that they're searching for? Well, definitely they were a gateway for me to get involved in the new age. So somehow it all happens that these psychedelic drugs, these substances, these plant medicines even, um, they support this false worldview where you get involved into this uh, like mm, astral planes where everything is so colorful everything is so uh, full of joy full of light 
full of um, love and peace. And this is the exact, um, the main beliefs in the new age, like there's total lack of holiness there. There's just only love and peace and no judgment, no justice. Uh, and they really support that. Now, uh, if you get into psychedelics, you will eventually end up doing either yoga, either astrology, either um, tai chi or something like that. Because it's all, they confirm each other, but they confirm the false light. This is the false light, like mm, the total absence of holiness. And you think that it's um, it's the truth and you're constantly like on the hook for the next next experience next um, revelation but it only lasts like a one day or even shorter um it never gives full answers you're constantly searching and constantly wanting more and more and more until well you find the actual truth but you have to be really looking for the truth with all your heart yeah yeah, so what I'm hearing you say is that it actually takes you further away from the truth that you're seeking because it it indoctrinates you into a new age worldview. And I completely agree with what you're saying. I remember when I took LSD for the first time, having this experience that we're all one, and which is a huge teaching in the new age movement that we're all one, which of course gets rid of the idea that you personally are going to stand before God one day and be held accountable for your own sin and be judged because how is that going to happen if we're all one and we are all God? Um, and that was something that I had learned experientially through the use of psychedelic drugs. Nobody even told me that um, there, it was a lie that I believed while I was taking psychedelic drugs. Um, and I think ultimately you see that core satanic lie that you are God, that you are not going to be held accountable for your actions here on earth to God, and that you can really do whatever you want. You see that satanic lie in almost every kind of new age modality. So you see that in the human design front, you see that um, across the new age. And ultimately, the truth that people are seeking, when they come to that knowledge of the truth, it's it's what's happened in your life. You come to this knowledge that God is holy, that you need to repent of your sins and uh, trust in Jesus Christ to save you from your sins, to have a restored relationship with God. And that's actually, like you mentioned, the it's like you're stuck in a matrix before, that the matrix is everything but that truth. Anything that you believe on this earth that takes you away from the fact that you need to be in relationship with Jesus Christ um, and you need to have him as your Lord and Savior, anything that takes you away from that is part of the matrix. You're not taking that red pill until you actually come to Christ. Um, and I can see how that's happened in your own story. So that's really incredible. Um, yeah. So yeah. please go on. Um, no, I was just like, um, I was thinking about uh, like when you're taking psychedelics you are doing basically the the same thing as the entire new age and old age practices like you're numbing completely your rational brain which in the bible it says like exactly the opposite fill your brain with fill your mind with the word of god don't let yourself um empty don't like don't get carried away don't be sober minded and that's exactly the opposite. And I think that mm, somehow because they um, psychedelics um, get around the rational brain and they have an influence on your subconscious, I don't know, you get so, so convinced that this is the reality, like this is the hidden reality. We're all one. We're all an, um, part of the same thing. We are reincarnating. You may see, like I used to see my previous past lives. Um, so you get convinced of these things that basically the satanic agenda wants you to see and keeps you distracted and keeps you away and further and further away from the truth. Amen. And I think yeah. that the reason that Satan is doing that is because ultimately he wants to take as many people away from God as, as humanly possible. And he's much older and wiser than we are. You know, we have maybe 90 years on this planet, if we're lucky, 100 maybe. Um, he's been here for thousands of years and he knows what tricks work with people. Um, yeah. 
and he knows that these new age lies work with people and they are working with people. I mean, you can see that all across um, young adults here in Australia. Um, I always thought when I was in high school that atheism would prevail and that most people would be atheists. But what I found is actually a lot of people that I know that I went to high school with get involved in the new age. They get involved in some like astrology or crystals or energy healing, any number of practices. Um, and so I think that that's why getting stories like yours out there to as many people as possible is so important for the kingdom of God um, and for the expansion of the kingdom of God. So um, I want to be respectful of your time. I want to ask you, what has life with Jesus given you that nothing that you were involved with before could give you? The biggest thing is a relationship with him. I know him. Like this is the end game. Like this is the end of the game. Really, really, when you go to Christ, when you get to know the true God, all the searching, all this hunger for the truth, for answers, it gets satiated. It's done. Like he said on the cross, it's done. Everything's done. And from now on, your life completely changes into a relationship with him. So you get rid of if you are in the new age, like you might be feeling overwhelmed with all these practices that you have to keep and all these morning rituals that uh, you can't live without having them uh, in order to feel better. But it's actually not that complicated. It's God himself and his word. It's the only thing we need and a relationship with him by prayer and listening to him. Um, so a lot of the the heaviness, a lot of the burden was taken away. And yeah, literally the best thing is that could happen in my life is knowing him, knowing why I exist, knowing my creator. That was the biggest thing and the change of heart, of course, because I, before, like it was the most, shocking understanding that you if you don't know christ you are a walking dead you are walking dead you are not even living you are trying to cope but your spirit is dead and by the way in human design it's thought that we have these two components like the body and the personality which the personality is like uh, we can say it's like the soul but it completely disregards the third element, which is the most important, and it's the spirit, our spirit. And it completely disregards that. Um, but when you get born again, when you meet Christ, when you believe in him, uh, you get born again, which means your spirit gets reborn. It gets resurrected to life. And it's a supernatural act of God. You cannot do it yourself. No practice, no a system, no knowledge will lead you to you yourself having this. It's an act of God. You can never absolutely do this on your own. And it's uh, it, like it's said in the scriptures, it's not your own doing. It's the gift of God. Yeah. Amen. And what we're doing with videos like this is it's not just because people's stories are interesting that people uh, take the time to share their testimonies on platforms like this. It really is because we've seen what it's like to go from death to life in our own lives. And that's why we take the time to make these videos in the hopes that people will seek Christ with all of their heart, because like you said, it's the end game. Um, it, it is, it's interesting. There are so many things like I've heard it described like a hamster wheel before with the new age. There's always another thing to keep you distracted, but what you're being distracted from is the most important thing that you could possibly find on this earth. And that is Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, the truth and the life and that nobody comes to the father except through me. Um, and so there is one gate, one way, the way is narrow. Um, and, but it is available to you if you will repent and, and put your faith in Jesus Christ. And so I would encourage everybody listening, um, please, please do that. Don't just listen to these videos because they're interesting. Uh, seek Jesus Christ. Um, and you've answered so many of these questions now, even as as we were just going through your testimony. So I thank you for that. Um, maybe we could finish by you could share 
what you would say to somebody who was in a similar position to you, somebody that's in the new age, they're trying to heal trauma, they're looking for answers, um, they don't buy into that uh, lie that they're just a highly evolved animal and it's all here by chance and we're just very lucky. Maybe they know that there's something more out there and they're searching. What would you say to somebody that's in that position? Well, I would ask them if they're really a truth seeker or they um, are really romanticizing this pursuit of truth because a lot of times when we are searching for the truth, uh, we get um, like in these stages when we romanticize the the pursuit itself. So uh, that's where a lot of art gets gets produced and it's beautiful art it's um very poetic but are you really a truth seeker and do you really want to find the truth because truth can be found and that means that when you find it the search ends and you have to ask yourself if you are really really wanting to get to know that truth because yeah you can have all of these um ideas and all of these um you have all all of your practices and all of your habits that you think they may lead you somewhere but question yourself are you really wanting to find the truth are you really thinking that these practices are leading you there are you actually progressing are you um just on this, like you said, hamster wheel. It's the perfect uh, description of what it feels like. It's a hamster wheel. And in the human design, it's more different because you relax finally from that hamster wheel, but it's a false sense of awakening. It's like when you accept that you are already there. And um, that's actually the another kind of deception that you acknowledge that well, maybe I will never get an answer or maybe I am already living what I'm supposed to be living and this is the truth. I just have to live my life uh, the best way I can. Um, but it's a false, it's a false sense of, uh, of awakening, of uh, even perceiving life because you're not there. And sometimes it takes something catastrophic to be really shaken but my advice is ask yourself and ask ask for the truth start praying to god for the truth start praying incessantly like your life depends on that because the lord appreciates when your heart is genuine and that means that you have to be wanting to know the truth 100 percent. 99 percent is not enough so you have to really be wanting to know the truth. And even like in myself, in my in my example, I wanted to, to know the truth and I would I would give my life for the truth. That's how bad I wanted it. Do you want truth so bad? I know that a lot of the things we are talking about, uh, about Jesus, about the Bible, about the demonic realm that is operating on our world currently it sounds absurd but after all ask for the truth and you will get the truth and the truth will set you free as it's written amen it does it does sound absurd to some you know to, to claim that god is real that life continues after death but to me it's even more absurd that everything came into existence from nothing we're really lucky and all there is to life is just trying to live as comfortably as possible. You die and then that's it. Like all of us know when we're confronted with our own death that that doesn't feel right. That story doesn't sit right with us. And it's because we were created for so much more. And I'm so glad that you have found the the God that created you, 
that you've experienced him um, and the transformation that uh, has taken place in your life as a result of that is beautiful and it speaks to itself. So I want to thank you so much for coming on, for sharing your story. Um, I want to also point people to your YouTube channel, which is going to be linked in the description box below. So if you're interested in human design and some of the errors around that, um, Denise has a, it's like a two hour long video on that. So you're going to get way, way more information there, obviously, than we can provide in this particular interview. Another thing that I thought to mention was that, um, and Maya's testimony will be released by the time you're listening to this. Um, so I'll link that in the description box below too. Um, she's got an incredible testimony. So if you've enjoyed uh, Denise's testimony, I know you'll enjoy hers too. Uh, so please check that out. Um, I know this is annoying when content creators ask you to do this, but if you could like uh, and subscribe, maybe even share the video, that just helps get the story out to far more people. Uh, it helps to reach more people for the kingdom. And uh, it's definitely appreciated if you're willing to do that. Um, yeah, was there anything else you wanted to say, Denise, before we wrap up? Well, I would like everyone who hears this message and still hasn't um, gave his life to Jesus and still doesn't know him, I pray that everyone gets saved and understand that we need to be saved and we cannot save ourselves by our own works. Amen. Turn to Christ. Take the red pill. It is the end game. Everything that you're looking for in this life can be found in Jesus Christ. I know that sounds absurd to some if you haven't encountered him, but truly he is everything you're looking for. And um, it's just been a privilege to hear you uh, expose some of these practices that are leading people away from him. Uh, and it's been a privilege to hear your story. So I want to thank you again for coming on. Thank you for having me. It was such a blessing.